And I'm realizing with, with this conversation and what's been going on in Afghanistan, how little I know. I have. All right, how's everybody doing today? Good, good. Doing well. I'm doing ready. Well. You guys ready for the first uh, Fitness is Life podcast? Yes, sir. Uh, hey, do it. Yeah. Happy Let's to be here. So we got a couple. We got a couple uh, uh, pretty heavy issues to talk about today. Um, one, obviously, uh, the recent deaths in bodybuilding. Um, something that I've been preaching for a long time, and everybody gets upset when I call someone out or say something about it, but uh, that's something we'll get into later. And then the first thing we'll get into is uh, what's going on over in Afghanistan. You got me and uh, Bio, Bio Crab Charlie down there, who both are um, uh, combat veterans, uh, both been to Afghanistan. You know, Charlie was a medevac crew chief. I was a, uh, a machine gunner. Um, so we both have experience there. Uh, this is our kind of first podcast, us all getting together. Uh, so if you're watching, like do us a, a huge favor. Um, we're just getting the channel growing. Uh, we have a lot of fun stuff, whether it be about, uh, fitness, whether it be about life, food, um, entertainment, it's kind of a little about everything on the, the fitness for dummies channel. This is just going to be our, hopefully our weekly podcast. We all get together and uh, talk about things that are important to, to us. And this is a couple of issues that, that hit, hit pretty close to home for us. So do us a huge favor, guys, like comment your opinion down below. Like it does make a big difference. If you want to share it, share it, subscribe to the channel. Like, like really like your support goes a long way. And we hope that you guys do engage and interact because this is um, these issues specifically are really important to us. So um, any support comments that you guys have, uh, you know, please, please uh, uh, do what you can. Now, I brought this topic up earlier today uh, in our little group group chat because I'm pretty passionate about it, um, having having served. And I thought it was interesting because I said I said, hey, well, hey, well, how about we get on? And we do this podcast uh, about Afghanistan um, and what's going on over there and, and what we think about it and maybe, you know, talk about it. And, and CJ, you were like, I don't know about that. I don't want to get too political. I don't wanna... I but, that. you know, that that uh, that raises like an important kind of question in the first place. So, you know, what what were the, the thoughts going through your head of why you would be, you know, hesitant to kind of approach that subject in the first place? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great question. So my first thought was that we are coming at it as a, a business. And so anytime that it, you're tying a, call what you want, a political opinion or, you know, picking a side on any kind of divisive subject when there's clearly, and for good reason, strong emotions on either side, it's just from a business perspective, it gets like kind of, is, is it worth it kind of thing? And, and that's what I thought. That's, that's, you know, what we talk about in, you know, business school and whatnot um, at UW. And, and Nick, you made a great point that basically made me like lose that entirely. You, th you said something along the lines of, you know, that's exactly the point. Everyone is too scared to talk about these things because they're so scared to offend somebody. But really, the reality of it is that these are such important issues that you should feel empowered and you should feel encouraged to at least have a discussion about it. There's nothing wrong with asking questions and having a discussion um, about what's going on. You know, we're not here to say like, this is right and this is wrong. We're just here to talk about it, you know, hopefully seek out a little more information from various sides, people who have been there. And, you know, as long as, you know, people understand that that's what we're doing here and we're just trying to have a an open discussion about it, that that's really the most important thing to me. But that was that was the initial thing is that it's you know, you would I, I I would bet you won't see Nike take a super strong stand one way or another, and if they do, it'll be this is bad. It's not going to be anything more than that. They're going to be like this needs to stop, which is a j obviously right. Like yeah, nobody, and, and like I said, the uh, you know the exact opposite of what needs to happen generally is what happens where you have these people online or the media or people putting these like the extreme versions you know out there. Um, with very large biases and that are attached to political statements or attached to financial statements. And, and then people don't feel either educated enough or comfortable enough discussing things in like a really healthy way. 
Um, and that's something that like, you know, we've struggled with even over the last year, like with all the divisiveness, with the, the ratio issues, like me and Mike have these discussions, like really great discussions yeah. that are very like we can have and, and really get into it and talk about it and feel comfortable around each other. You know, we work together, we're family like that. We even just if like talking about it around someone else, like they're automatically going to paint a picture like people will automatically paint a picture because I'm 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 white and a business owner. And so I get labeled something, you know, people look at Mike. And he's got that tattoos. They're going to label him something you got. You got I mean, Charlie's pretty like kind of vanilla. But CJ, you got you know, you're young. You have these necklaces and you're like, oh, how fun. Yeah. They don't know that you're like one of the hardest workers that that you know i've ever known they don't know how you know what mike does for his family and for our community and um how good of a natural person he is so it's tough because all these opinions that really should be talking about this stuff they don't and then on top of that like they you don't you're kind of scared to even go we're like oh i don't know about that so you don't even go approach those subjects or look into them because you don't you're like well i can't talk about it anyway so yeah. why am i even gonna care what's going on outside of seeing some random like Facebook meme, um, you know, that some extreme version left or right or whatever side of the issue is posting and kind of agreeing with or not with, Oh, that's my friend. So it might, it might be true or might not instead of just uh, discussing, um, you know, these things. And so I definitely have my, my uh, like strong opinions based on my personal experience, based off being uh, over there. I'm sure Charlie does too. And I'm sure, like, Mike and, you know, CJ, you guys are both come from military families. Like, yeah. both of your parents uh, were in, in the military, and they yeah. probably have really strong views. And I've noticed, like, that version, like, the 20 years ago military also had, like, the people who were in have much different opinions and stuff, too. So it, it's complicated. Issue. I think the point is, like, we need to be able to discuss these things without, like, stupid memes uh, misinformation and just like extreme versions of of things. Yeah. So this, this is an opportunity to have a narrative outside of what's going on on Facebook and CNN, Fox, wherever it may be that people are hearing about it. It, it gives a, a chance for us to have a, another narrative and perspective on it for people to see. So yeah, yeah. I say so, Mike. I, I, I out of all of us, I'd say you're probably most likely to have paid the least amount of attention to it. <laughs> <laughs> and I could be wrong. Yeah. I could well, be wrong, but but I'm just saying, like I know you 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 know like that's not a world that you're like super comfortable with. Um, your dad doesn't talk about that stuff a whole lot. You know, CJ's around his dad and family just oh, just every day, pretty much. So I'm sure it gets discussed a little bit more. So like, where like what's your level of knowledge about kind of what you've heard and what's going on? I think that's a good perspective on what like the average person actually I mean, knows about the situation. I mean, a lot of the stuff that I've been hearing, you know, people saying when they've asked me about it is just like stuff about the Taliban and how we're, you know, not supposed to be over there or this and that. And I think for me, like when we first when you first sent that, you know, text out about the topic, I was, you know, when all this stuff first happened and I first heard it, like my first reaction was like I was mad. And I think part of the reason why I was mad is because like. One of my good friends was, you know, a vet. He's not here because he took his life. But, like, you know, he went to war early on in early 2000. And, like, we were, you know, hearing and seeing all that shit. So, automatically, I thought, like, it's all bad. It's war. Like, if these people are bad over there. They're terrorists. Like, I, I didn't really know. That's why I was, like, you know. So, but then after seeing some of the other things, you know, the clips and things that they've been showing on the news, it's like, okay, maybe, maybe I was wrong in thinking that because it looks like these people are, like, the people of the country are trying to trying to get away and trying to escape something. So it's like, you know, really, you know, what what what, what should I be feeling? How should I be feeling about that? I, I don't know. It was, like, kind of a mixed emotions, man, like, to be honest. like, And I felt bad that I didn't, that I wasn't up on that because I'm normally up on a lot of things. But Yeah, I think, I think like, you'd fall into the category of, like, the vast majority of people who just see, they see people suffering, right? They see people falling off of airplanes. Mm -hmm. You know, they see these storylines of where we've abandoned them and Taliban has taken over, you know, like yeah. that you're, you're seeing just this circle and you're like, that's terrible. Yeah. yeah. And it Which, is like, yeah. it's 
terrible. Like, yeah, you know, it's it's someone was literally willing to to try to cling on to a plane, which you're not going to survive anyway. Yeah, what a concept that is. Suit. Like, there's no chance. Like, that's you know, that, that's what it was kind of like reminding me of when people were jumping off the world trade. It was like, well, this is the only option I have. Yeah. So hopefully yeah. it works out. Um, and yeah, so, and yeah, it, so you're right. It's a terrible. It's a terrible situation. Well, um, yeah. When I saw and, that. I, I thought, like, when I did see that, those images, I thought, you know, here we are in a country, right, where, like, we're divided amongst each other through, like, race or police or whatever, and, like, other people are willing to, to come here because they, they, they hear about us being the greatest country of freedom, and it's like, we're fighting amongst ourselves over religion, you know, politic, political parties, race, and it's like, I'm like, yo, watching this guy fall off his plane, I'm thinking, damn, like, he would rather literally risk his life and die to know what it's like to experience freedom. And we can't even, like we're in our own country and we can't get along with each other because of our opinions. So I was like, it, I don't know, man. It just kind of took me down this whole, like, I'm like, dude, this, this whole thing is messed up. I think that's a, a pretty common thing that one of my good friends since middle school is kind of, it's a, it's a hard mindset to, to go along with because everybody has their own problems, right? Everyone has their own issues they face on a daily basis, right? But mm -hmm. In the grand scheme of things, take a step back. It really, I do think, gets us can be simplified to like, I have a place to sleep, I have drinking water, I have all these amenities and whatnot. Like my problems are so minuscule when you compare them to people who are basically willing to die rather than live where they where they are now. Yeah, um, it, it's it's crazy to think and to like circle back to like being afraid to talk about it, right? I I feel as though the current political climate has made it so that if I was to post not even as a business as a personal as, as a person myself if I was to post any opinion related to politics in any way on, on my social media right there are realistically two things that will happen people will agree with me and say like you're brave for posting this and there are people that will attack me there is such a small percentage of people who will approach you on social media whether it's publicly or, or in a private message that want to have a civil conversation and i i feel very strongly about this the vast majority of people i have any kind of political social conversation with it feels as though they go into the conversation with zero desire to listen to the other person's side if you're taking sides yeah and and truly willing to be like you know what actually now that you bring that point up i agree with you i i do i do see where you're coming from i've done that many a time because i go into things with an open mindset and i know that i don't know everything i'm very aware that i am not all knowing and nobody is right mm -hmm. and and for whatever reason and i'm not saying i know why but it's just it feels as though any conversation you have around politics people are their feet are in concrete. They are not going to walk to your side yeah. for whatever reason. They are just so unwilling to change. And I, hopefully conversations like this between, you know, normal people, people who have been there, we're not sitting here taking a side or anything like that, but we can at least talk about it and be adults and, and you know, maybe learn a few things or, or, or see a different a viewpoint. Yeah. Yeah, I think one of the biggest things that I see that I, I get um, frustrated with with our society is is the fact that we feel like we need to convince someone of whatever our opinion is or whatever our side is and yeah. when you're talking about like having a discussion it you when you have a discussion the goal shouldn't be to let me change this person's opinion it should be let me understand why you have the opinion that you do mm -hmm. and and if you can go into a conversation saying like well, why did this person vote for Trump? I clearly understand why someone did. Yeah. I don't agree with it, maybe, but I understand why he was elected. I understand why people have the views they do, and I appreciate them for having the views. I have a problem, you know, and this goes like, you know, way, way back into pretty much everything in our society, where it's like, well, if you don't think what I think, you know, go fuck yourself. Like, yeah. the, the, that's kind of what it is us mentality and that's so wrong that's that, that if you're not with us you're against us mentality i feel like is what is causing so many of these 
political and race based issues in the country because it's it's not true. You don't have to agree on everything with another person, even your best friend or your spouse, your brother, your family, to still have that open dialogue. Right? Yeah, and I think division, you know, it sells tickets. Every single big news story in the last four to five years has been about division. It's either about Trump dividing us, the border dividing us, COVID dividing us, uh, BLM dividing us, the war dividing Like, every, like, only things that cause conflict and friction make news. So we're just now trained, and this goes to social media, too. It's like, oh, if you don't like my opinion, unfollow me. I made a comment on someone's meme because the meme was literally like, mm-hmm. it, it, people post these memes of like, oh, you know, like, thanks, Obama. Thanks, Trump. They, like, like these ones that have like these stats thrown out there that are like yeah. not realistic or so like have no sort of like uh, actual it's fact. Very it's just specific. like, yeah, yeah I, I posted this. Therefore, it's true. Oh, they, like, and I'm like, I'm like, and I said, I said, I said, please please let me know how your life has changed in any way in and in, in how is insignificantly your life changed in the last year last five years did it change under obama did anything that your life like name one thing that really severely affected your life based on whoever was in charge and it's it's kind of tough to do i'd say like covid and the mandates are probably the biggest thing yeah. you know and that that was a very very recent thing and so someone jumps on underneath and says well like oh well he can voice his opinion if you don't like it you can unfollow him that's like that's not the point like i I, I, my response was i actually appreciate having having opinions from all sorts of other people's because once we start limiting our and narrowing our scope of opinions it becomes very dangerous it becomes very extreme so I said, yeah. I actually defend his right to say whatever he wants. Yep. I was just making a statement <laughs> about how realistically his life has changed. I had a crisis on the border wall. I'm in Arizona. <laughs> nobody here talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. I had a like it's just reality versus um, uh, media is, is real interesting. But but you know now to kind of get into uh, you know personal. Uh, feelings uh, about it. Um, I went to Afghanistan in 2013. I went to Iraq in 2007. Now, keep in mind, we went to Afghanistan before we went to Iraq. So we, we years earlier, were in Afghanistan. I went to Afghanistan six years after going out. So it was about 10 years 10 or 11, 2013, so mm-hmm. yeah, 10, 11, 12 years that we're in Afghanistan. The thing that I was shocked about was Afghanistan, the base, when I was into and I was at all of them. I was at Kandahar, Bagram, um, Leatherneck, uh, Kabul, Kala. Like, I went to all these places. They were Stone Age compared to Iraq. Like, mm-hmm. Stone Age. I was like Bagram, 12 years into the war, didn't have paved roads in most places. I'm like, <laughs> some of these bases in Iraq were so nice. The food, so nice. The setups. So I, I'm just going like, wait, I'm I'm here six, seven years later, and it's it's 20 years in the past. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going like this, this makes no sense. Like, we were still using the Russian buildings. You know, I'm like, this, something about this just screams, we are, we we did not care about this war for a long time. We didn't advance in this war in a long time. We kind of just got there. We stayed put, you know, and, and, and didn't do anything. Now, that was my first, first kind of impression when I first got there. The longer, the longer I was there, the less hope I had for us doing anything about the situation for one specific reason. And that was education. When I was in Iraq, every single little, and I, I was a gunner, so I'm driving these little tiny villages that are literally made out of mud huts. 
every single one of them, they had one nice building. And that was the school. I had five-year-old kids walk up to me and speak English in Iraq. Genuinely cared about their country. Us going there just happened to bring in a whole lot of shitty people from the outside. So the country was flooded to pick a fight with us. Afghanistan's a different story. Everything I felt about Afghanistan was like, they wanted to be left in the Stone Age. They wanted to be left alone. They wanted to do their thing. It's kind of the same, same way they were, you know, against the Russians. They're just like, just leave us alone. Let us do our thing. Let us run our country. They, there never was a sense of progress. There never was a sense of, of hope. I never saw it. That was my personal experience. And I had friends that went there that got really hurt there. You know, I have people I know who went out, medics that I know went out on missions with special forces operators, and they're, like, mentally so messed up afterwards. Like, and so I'm seeing these things, and I'm watching these movies. You know, I'm watching American Snipers, and I'm watching these war hero movies about us going into Afghanistan and doing this stuff and clearing the, the terrorists. And the years start going by and the years start going by and it's not getting better and we're not doing anything. And the Taliban is still, still around. They're still present. And we still didn't have, you know, Osama at that point. And then we finally kind of found him, but like that, that phase kind of passed, but then we stayed there and then we kept going and we kept going. They kept telling us, Hey, it's getting better. It's getting never once did I hear anyone who had been there said it was getting better. And so, so you start, looking at that going like, what are we doing? It's 20 years. We're talking about 20 years in this place. Mm -hmm. And, and we don't have anything to show for it. And so, so I started kind of being really against us having gone in the first place a long time ago, like a long time ago, like saying we should never have gone there because there was no clear mission. Osama bin Laden was in Pakistan. We weren't really doing anything about that. The army I mean, Charlie, you were, you were, you know, you were with helicopters. Your wife was a helicopter pilot. How many, how many helicopters were taken down by an A and A? Oh, um, I don't know the exact number, but quite a few. <laughs> a lot. Many, That's many flight crews lost their lives or were seriously injured due to the Taliban. You know shooting them down or planting IEDs where they knew they were going to land or having these uh, these complex um, attacks where they would blow an IED or hurt a child and wait for helicopter crews to show up because they knew how expensive or what, helicopters What about even a, an Afghan army member, you know, taking down a helicopter? You know, like, we I had all sorts of, like, we had lots of art reports of, of um, Afghan military shoot up a bunch of a bunch of people while we were there so th i have an example of this so we used to pick up we picked up a lot of uh ana afghani national army soldiers a lot um and we would take them to their camps or their their bases for treatment um we would stabilize them in the air you know uh do what we could and we would drop them off there well we had to stop dropping them off <laughs> at the ANA bases and camps because they were planning attacks on us. A the ANA who were, you know, actually Taliban or whatever, you know, were planning attacks on us. I remember one specific instance. Uh, we offloaded several several patients. We had two two UH-60 Blackhawks, you know, patients in the back of both, landed, offloaded them, and like, I'm pulling security outside of the helicopter, you know, I'm, like, h helping out however I can with the medic, but I'm mostly just pulling security while we're there because it was a really sketchy, sketchy place to be. And I look over at the side of this building, and there's, like, two a a guys just filming us. And they're probably, like, 50 yards away. But I'll tell you what, I've never had my butthole pucker so much in the, in the moment because I just felt that it was going to be an inherent attack. So yeah, even the ANA, the ANA I think has probably been a significant percentage infiltrated by the Taliban for the entire existence of it. I mean, there might be a small difference. You have your 
ANA soldiers who truly wanted to change the country. I'm sure it's kind of split, but then I think there was plenty who were just straight up Taliban supporters and wanted a paycheck and wanted food. And I think it like, you know, people are like, oh, how, how could we have just, you know, left and, and left them like that? And, and exactly what happened proves the point of why we, in my opinion, never should have been there. We're talking about we spent more money on Afghanistan than we did rebuilding Europe after World War II. Just on Afghanistan, we provided them an entire fleet of vehicles, ammunition, weapons, helicopters, advanced technology, trained their entire force, and they laid down without firing their weapons in less than three weeks. They already had agreements in place with the Taliban before they were even, before we're even gone to turn over all of their capitals and all of it. So the Taliban just came in and just, they literally just walked in and took over. They did not even fight. We provided hundreds of billions, more than trillion dollars in support and aid and training and technology to this country who is now one of the best armed countries in the entire world. And they didn't even fight back. So basically what happened is 20 years later, the same, they, in less than three weeks, they took over without a fight. So we did all that. Was there any, in 20 years, was there anything we ever, ever could have done to, I don't to make Afghanistan an independent, non-Taliban ran country? No. In my opinion, no, because we were just propping up the government. In my opinion, the government was basically, you know, it's just like a figurehead. You know, well, Manchurian candidate, figurehead, whatever, because, I mean, there's no way, in my opinion, that the U.S. was not ensuring in some way that a Western-leaning, supporting president prime minister whatever would be elected so it was just kind of us propping them up and it almost seems like us trying to just make it seem like things were still progressing in any sort of positive direction when in all reality like they weren't it, it was a fake government to me like it was it was like it was a real government but like they weren't doing things that the government should have been doing with that amount of money do do you guys know what happened to the president after uh, Russia left the first time? No, I don't. They hung they hung the president in like this big public jail, like right outside the Capitol. Sure. And so the the president who we had in place actually talked about this. And do you guys know what he did? Mm -hmm. He left. He left the country. He went oh, to, we, oh, uh, yeah, he, the current one. Yeah, he, so yeah, he, he left he because he said better, he didn't better. want there to be a repeat of what happened last time, which was bloodshed, war, the Taliban taking over. This was actually much more peaceful takeover than, than previous. I actually, I know there's a, a, a shitty situation, but looking at the global stage, we're talking about like, a lot of people are like, oh, we prevented terrorism for 20 years. Uh, I, we created a lot, I mean, a lot of terrorist attacks happened in the United States since then. Maybe not on the large scale, but mm -hmm. a lot of terrorist attacks. So I, I don't quite buy that argument. Now, the Taliban is going in to this country with an actual, with an actual army on the public stage. And they did this without really a fight. Now, do they want to bring another fight there? I don't think they want to be kicked out of their country for another 20 years. I actually think they want to set up shop and be recognized now as the legitimate leaders of the country. And they will probably do things much differently. They're already talking about escorting the Americans with safe passage. Like a lot of stuff is going on in the media. I'm noticing where it's like, like I'm sure not everything is great there. Cause you're talking about, you know, 85,000 Taliban in multiple parts of the country. So there's probably a lot of differing views and opinions, but once once everything kind of the dust settles, they're probably going to establish a pretty well organized governmental system that is 
moving more in the direction of the, the world in general, um, you know, and so in the long run, this, you know, maybe three, four years from now will be a much better situation from that for them. Uh, because I don't think they're going to want to have a repeat. I don't think they could have a repeat, but I think they want to actually have a, a, an actual recognized government uh, moving forward. You know, it, this has this is going to be kind of a tangent, but I'm going to bring it full circle. Trust me. So the more I'm sitting here, I consider myself a relatively intelligent, relatively informed adult. And I'm realizing with, with this conversation and what's been going on in Afghanistan, how little I know. I have gone to good. I've gone. I went to a great high school. I went to a great college. Right. You were raised in a, a good. I was solid raised in a military household. household. Absolutely. Right. Here's Every advantage. Here's, here's what I know. Right. Jack shit. Here's what I know. <laughs> Taliban bad. USA is tapped in America, so we got to be good. War yeah. in the Middle East. A well, Afghanistan, let's not talk about Iraq. How we created the Taliban in the first place, either. Like, no, it, God no, no. We would never talk can't about that. Do that. I, know, I know that. I know terrorism is bad. I know Taliban is bad. I know Afghanistan and Iraq were there. Do I know why? Not really. Stop terrorism. Like that's where it starts. So, to go back to the education thing you mentioned, like I'm sitting here and I'm listening to all this, and I'm like, one, why don't I know this? And then I'm sitting here and I'm like, in school. What is the benefit? I know people say in history class we have to learn about the past so that it we don't repeat it, right? At what point does it make more sense to teach 18-year-old high schoolers who are getting ready to vote in a presidential election about the War of 1812 and not why there are currently thousands and thousands of U.S. soldiers fighting across the country? Like, and you are voting... And you're saying, like, I agree with the war. I don't agree with the war. And, like, I'm voting. And, like, I have my feelings towards, like, should we be there? Should we not? And then I'm sitting here and I'm like, I really don't. Maybe my feelings are, like, not in the right place. Do you – does it annoy you guys or does it, like, drive you insane that I, as a, you know, college graduate, I read the news, I stay up to date, I have no idea, like, what you guys were doing there, realistically, besides stopping terrorism? I, I would much rather, here's what's difficult for me, I like kind of like Mike, I would much rather you say, I don't know about this enough to even have an opinion than for you to pick an opinion based on a party line yeah. or what your friends think that has no amount of, of actual research um, and is all based on feelings um, that that just just gets in the way of actually having conversation. If you look at this realistically, there is not one good argument for the word. I don't, please, anybody in the room, anybody listening, anybody, please someone raise their hand and say that the Afghanistan war was a good idea. I would love for anyone to do that but yet we have a problem with how we leave. So I, I used this uh, analogy to Charlie earlier. And it's, what's the best time to plant a tree? <laughs> so 50, 100 years ago? Yeah. <laughs> Yesterday. The second yeah. best time is today. <laughs> the best time to, to go to, or to, to get out of Afghanistan is to never have gotten there in the first place. And then every single day since then. Yeah. So it was going to be ugly. In fact, I thought it would be much uglier. I think bloodshed, battles. This was probably the most... Yeah, a lot of people are stuck at the airport and there's going to be some suffering. There's going to be some struggle. But right now, I mean, we're talking about... The Taliban is at least, on paper, talking about amnesty for everybody based on past transgressions. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're negotiating safe passage for everyone to the airport to be able to get out if they want to leave. And so it's going to be a logistical um, a logistical kind of difficulty. And there will definitely be some suffering, but this is dramatically less violent 
than I ever could have imagined pulling out of Afghanistan was going to be. Now, what happens in six months and 12 months will be really, I, I'm really interested in seeing what happens there. But to knee jerk reaction and say, like, that if anybody thinks that there was no way the Taliban was, was taking over, that that wasn't going to happen, you need, you, you are, are high. Like, at that, the Taliban was waiting. They have too much support. They have too much will. Like, they have too much corruption. If anything, this will bring some level of peace to the country. And it won't be what wants to like merit. Like, it's not going to be for everyone. It just won't. But it will bring some level of stability. And to survive, like, they have to build a financial system. They have to build an economic system. They have to, they, they have to, an infrastructure. Like, they... In order to live in 2020, you've got to build this stuff. So they're going to have to work with uh, organizations. They're going to have to work with other countries in order to help. China's going to get involved. Russia's going to get involved. Like U- it, UN. It, it's going to, it, it, it's definitely going to be a better situation in five years. And they're going to have a lot of pressure um, for women's rights, for, um, for, for, for just the way they treat their citizens, you know, it's like yeah. we want to talk about Afghanistan, North Korea, still talking about slave camps, like yeah. terrible conditions. Yeah. But China, next the- to China, so we can't yeah. it can't do nothing about that. Like there's stuff going on in African countries. There's stuff going on in South American countries that are way worse, and it's like. Oh well, you pulled out of Afghanistan. Oh, you're a shitty president. It's like, I if if Trump had pulled us out, I'd have. Whoever you. pulled us out, I would have. Any of them. Thought. Any of them. I think. So, I think all of them that didn't are cowards. And and the fact that that we are now, I I think it's it's I'm I'm very happy that we don't have to have troops in harm harm's way anymore. And I so, know there's so, like Charlie, you have you know some people that are still there, right? Yes, uh, I have two uh, two friends that are at the airport. So, so what's kind of, what's the update? Is it? Do you have you talked to me? Is it still pretty? I've messy literally or? got one text message through on Signal and re- received one one back. Said uh, safe at the airport. That's all I've heard. So, yeah. yeah. So I really don't think the Taliban wants some like big international I'm murder, sure. like killing people in the streets, like. They don't. They don't need that. They, they can't. They can't because they know they need so much economic support from the EU and anyone. Because the, so they can't. Their hands are kind of tied here, in my opinion, because like they can't just go back to the way things were when they ruled before. Um, it's not feasible because they won't be able to rule it's a country of 35 plus million people i might be off a million or two but it's yeah. right around 35 million people that is a lot of people you have to have an economy you have to have infrastructure these government services and so if the taliban isn't able or willing to compromise on some of these major human rights and ethical you know abuses that have been brought up then they won't be able to succeed and they know that it forces their hand, in my so, And they're so, bordering Pakistan and India, which are both pretty advanced, like, like you know, countries that have a, a decent amount of power and infrastructure. So, like, you can't have a border with kind of a third world country and, and let them stay that way. And, like, because if things fall into chaos, it's going to cause a lot of problems with those countries. And so they're going to have to work together. To help lift those other countries up, or else there's a potential for for those for Afghanistan to affect those countries too. So it, it the situation in the long run will more than likely get much better. So I'm going to try and play devil's advocate here. So <clears throat> if we go back to the, I would say the most consistent thing I've seen, other than this is bad, something needs to be done, right? is the the treatment of like women and children and whatnot and like forcing into marriage and whatnot so like Mm -hmm. i would argue that all of us can agree that that is not a good thing right and so from what i understand it's it's terrible yes so from what i understand 
the Taliban is essentially like an Islamic group that has like stricter views than what the state was previously, right? So maybe that's where Sharia law. Sharia yeah. law. Yep. Yes. So, so I guess I would say if I was to try and argue why someone would say we should not have left or whatever that argument looks like, at what point if we if we are seeing these things happening or if we knew these things were going to happen, the the mistreatment of of women and children, etc. Do you think that in general we have an obligation as a first world country who has already been there for years to say like, look, we know this is going to happen. We can't leave. Or, or if this started happening somewhere else, do you think like we have an obligation to get involved because we don't agree with it? I think like that's, that's the only thing we can Yeah, We're see. putting our values. There are, 50 to 100 countries in yeah. the world that have terrible human rights violations look at against Saudi women, Arabia. other races, like, yeah. Saudi Arabia, it, one of our biggest Middle East allies, if you look into their, their record of uh, women rights abuses, mm-hmm. oh, it's pretty bad. I believe just in the last, I might be wrong on this, don't quote me, but I believe just uh, in the last three years, Women were allowed to get driver's licenses and I think that's Iran. It, yeah, I, I might, I might it, be off. Of it's I, they both of them. Yeah, I mean, any of those countries, they that they their country. And there's a lot of women who support that. There, there's a lot of women that don't. We're putting yeah. our values on their country, and not to say like it's messed up. Like according to our values, and yeah. according to like. I would say, hopefully, most people's most values. People's values yeah. But, I mean, when we go down that road, like, we, we're, what we're picking and choosing, you know, what uh, what countries we do and do, you know, don't want to kind of highlight for, for human yeah. rights violations. Yeah, yeah. If we were to go down that same logic of, like, we have to, you know, based on what I was saying, like, and that's not my thought, but... Or my, my opinion, but you know, if the thought was like, oh, they're going against what we know is right, so we have to fight them or something like that. I mean, we're fighting China, we're fighting Saudi Arabia, we're fighting North Korea, like we're fighting, you know, half the world at one time. Like, I, it's just like I, you can only do so much. You know what I mean? And and like to go back to what Mike said earlier, you know, where where do you place you know social issues happening in the U.S. versus social issues happening? on the other side of the planet it's like you cannot fix or solve every problem like we as a country cannot solve every single problem overnight or anything like yeah. that. yeah and i think that's where like there has to be the kind of consensus of political pressure and economic pressure on these countries to make a change and then not expect that they're going to change overnight like these things yeah. take decades yeah. not days um yeah. and so there's going to be a new normal, and then that normal is going to be adjusted over the course of, you know, the next decade or two um, into more, like, more of a global type of, of um, ideals. But, like, countries are going to be different, you know, uh, forever. That's It's just kind of human nature. But that, so maybe that's why it, it's a there. shitty, it's like you said, there's going to be some people who are in very shitty situations. Yeah. That okay. is not a reason for us to be propping up, spending a trillion dollars in their country. Like it just doesn't make sense. And anyone who says like, well, oh, we could have done it better. How? Tell yeah. Like oh, everyone says that like, oh, I just don't like the, I hear what you're saying. I just don't like the way you're saying it. You know? <laughs> yeah. Like, Okay, well, what what would you do differently? Tell me, yeah. tell me what you would do differently. Would you negotiate with the Taliban? They've blown yeah. up your your fellow Americans. Would you negotiate with them? If the, I think if, that's if, why if, I said. I mean, honestly, like, man, that's why I said I didn't. It, it's it's like it's hard for because I and the reason why I said this is because like so on Friday or whenever it was this was all happening like because like I said I just wasn't watching the news or I wasn't really like you see things pop up on your Instagram, Facebook. And it's like, as soon as I see it, it's like something about war or something. It's like, I don't even want to read. It's so negative. Right. I just don't even want to look at it. But like, so this guy came into our store, right? Everyone knows we're West coast supplements. We're better known family ran business. And, you know, he's walking around, walking around and, you know, I'm, you know, doing my thing, talking to him, asking him how he's doing. And like, he instantly brings that up to me. And, 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 and as you know, he's like, well, so what do you think? 
And I just was, you know, like, you know, sir, I don't really have an opinion. Like, <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, and like, just by me saying that, because I don't want to get into a discussion with some boy, I don't, I'm not, you know, I don't know a lot about. Right. And, and I could kind of tell he was kind of trying to start a debate with me. And I was just like, you know, sir, I, I don't, I don't really have an opinion on it. You know, it's messed up and this and that. And like, he, this dude literally was just like, <laughs> you don't have an opinion. He's just like, then you're not an American. Like you're no better than them, and I was like, uh, and that's it kind of, I was like, wait, I'm like, I'm no better than I'm like, I don't like. All I said was I don't want to talk about like I. Yeah, what does that mean? Wanna, <laughs> and this is like, it's okay to say, look, I don't know about that. I'm not well versed in it. I tend to focus on my family and my community, and that's where the bulk majority of my energy goes. Yeah. And that's okay. I would rather someone say that then try to force an opinion on on someone and that's what kind of tends to happen a lot it's like and that, you and have to have an opinion on this it's like i yeah. i don't have an opinion on how to fix my car because i don't know how to fix cars <laughs> so <laughs> that, if you ask yeah. him and say look <laughs> I, <laughs> I really don't know enough about that to give you a real answer you're the i you know, really thought you, i thought that was a great answer that i gave him too because like why would you want to get into something with something someone that's not well versed in it right that's why i said i was like you know man sir i don't you know i'm not i've been following it and I, so i just don't really have an opinion and he just was like saying all these things about the news and this and that and i'm like sir i you know man like i'm just here to help you with supplement needs i don't like, I <laughs> he was he was either it. looking looking to get into it with somebody because he was feeling sounds like he was feeling very negative about it yeah, um yeah. so he was either looking to have you agree with him, which you didn't immediately, or to argue with somebody because yeah. they didn't agree with him. He wanted that, that yeah. bias, you know? Like yeah, I think so, too. And it was just like, it just kind of, like I said, I mean, it threw me off because he was just like, you know, then he started out with the whole, like, well, did you serve? And I'm like, well, no, sir, I didn't. But, I'm, you know, I grew up in a military family. And it was just like one thing after another. And, like, that's where it's like with you guys, it, it, it's like, you know, you guys being former military, a lot of people being former military and, and experiencing that stuff. It's like, you know, Nick's told me, you know, some stories about his, you know, um, experiences. You have too, Charlie. And that's why it's like, I can't, I just don't feel comfortable talking about it because I've never seen it. And I've never, you know, the closest thing I ever saw was when I went to the VA, when my father was working there and seeing the soldiers like really hurt bad, like blown up. Like that's the, the closest thing I'd ever seen to like war, right? Like young guys, uh, my age or younger, like hurt real bad. And so I don't know. It's just, and I I've seen these like videos, like, as I, you know, of special forces guys, guys that have done like, I mean, like crazy thing, like the hero, like bravery that like yeah. is way beyond whatever position I've been put in. Um, you know, and a lot of them, like you could tell they struggle with like what, I think everybody held on to to it because they're like, well, if we leave and we just turn it over, then what what was that for? What did I fight for? Did, did we did we lose? Did we win? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, did America lose? Like, and that's why I, I was telling Charlie, I was like, I was like, man, I've been watching a lot of these like videos about you know the special forces guys and these guys that are just like the level of bravery and heroism. You know, and like the American sniper and lone survivor, and I'm watching these, and like there's a whole different vibe now. I'm like, heroes are are based on the people who won the war, you know, but we can't, we didn't win the war, and so it's what difficult for me now is that like these guys were the best of the best when it comes to our fighting force, like, and I I can't imagine what they went through and i mean i've been in some pretty heavy combat i remember the moment i was thought i was gonna die and these guys were talking about like just the most crazy situations losing friends losing limbs meant like the mental ish like mm -hmm. and look back and say things are right back where they started and i i feel like like i'm not upset about it and i'm proud of my service but God damn, dude, I don't want anyone to ever be put in that position again. You know, like it's it's so frustrating that we ever were there in the first place. And these people who are were really American heroes, their talents 
couldn't have been used to help our own country improve its situation. And this money that was spent over there and these, these billionaires that were made from these DC uh, companies wasn't spent on our own people <clears throat> and like some bravest, best people in our country instead of, you know, fighting battles in our own country to improve people's lives, like sacrifice theirs halfway around the world for yeah. something that in the end didn't mean anything. Yeah. And when people say like, I saw someone make a comment like, we kept terrorism at bay for 20 years. No, we didn't. That's bullshit. How many terrorist attacks have been here? You remember ISIS? Like, Al Qaeda <laughs> and ISIS, they're, they're bad. Like, they're, they, they straight up hate us. Like, the yeah. Taliban, the Taliban was kind of the ruling party, and Al Qaeda was an offshoot of other different things. Um, Al Qaeda definitely terror, 100% terrorists. Like, ISIS, 100% terrorists. But, like, you know, the World Trade Center, that, that's not that's not happening all the time. But, I mean, there's terrorism, local terrorism going on all the time because of all the hate that we've bred between each other. On, yeah. on that note, you, you talk about terrorism and how we prevent, you know, people will debate that we, you know, prevented or reduced terrorism for 20 years. Well, I mean, we might have, you know reduced it at a negligible level or like maybe like terrorist attacks that were happening in Afghanistan but those wouldn't have happened if we weren't there anyway probably we supported Osama bin Laden and, and let's let's talk for a minute or or not i just want to throw it out there that uh the number of domestic terrorist attacks in the US mm -hmm. there's a large number of those that have occurred since 2001 when we've been in there and if you look at the data I've looked at it. I don't know the exact numbers. Domestic terrorism-wise, since 9-11, so after 9-11, most of that has been committed by American citizens who are white. In America, at least. I, I was going to say, like, when you were talking about domestic terrorism attacks, I was like, yeah, like, uh, based on race or based on anything like that. And, you know, I, I think that... Uh, Maybe to bring it full circle, you know, one more time before we get to our next topic, unless you guys have any parting thoughts. Um, we've been talking about this for like almost an hour. So, yeah. you know, here's where I'm sitting at, right, as, as the average person. If someone like Nick, who has been there for an extended period of time, is coming to me, and not only has he been there and he's thinking his personal thoughts of, I don't know why we were here, I don't think we ever should have been there, but when he's telling me that the citizens of the country are like in the mindset when he's there, like leave us alone. We don't want you here. We don't want anything to do with you. The 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 vast majority, I would yes. say, yes. And then so at that point, it's like, like what argument is there? Like besides the one that I brought up earlier, which is like, oh, these are human rights violations. Which again, they like I think we we can all agree they're horrible things that that have happened. But if, if we are in agreement that we cannot solve every single issue in the world as one country, then I think the conversation like kind of almost ends there, it seems like. Does it not? What do you guys think? Yeah. I mean, I, the, the turning point for me was Iraq um, when ISIS walked in. The, the, the area that I almost died in, that I had bullets flying past my head in, that I thought a whole bunch of my, my friends had died in, ISIS, when they, they literally walked in and just took it over without a fight, that's when I realized, like, these both these wars, they're, they're unnecessary, they're pointless. We never really had a real plan, and all we did was come in and mess up a lot of stuff. And I think you can make some points about Osama bin Laden, you can make some points about Saddam Hussein, um... But I, I think looking back, history is not going to be kind to, to either of these wars. And, and on a kind of a, a finishing note with that, I think it would be good for anybody who is thinking about this topic to truly ask themselves, is Afghanistan or Iraq truly in a better place now than it was before we were there? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. my question. Yeah, that's a good one. All right. 
Well, hopefully, hopefully people uh, pay attention to that whole thing, and um, I'd love to hear what what they have to say. So you know, please uh, give us your opinions, and we hope that you can do that civilly. Um, I don't know after listening to this, like if if you're going to be an asshole, then just shut the fuck up. But um, <laughs> but you know, if you have an opinion, I, I respect your your right to have an opinion, and I think that's important for. For everyone to have just make sure that you listen to to whatever people have to say so moving on to our next topic 